Good afternoon. Mike Hatfield here again. And uh, it's the Thanksgiving season, and I kind of wanted to post a little something here on being thankful. Um, I don't want to be as kind of the same format as everybody else, I guess I would say. If you have your Bible with you here today, open up here to the book of Psalm, uh, Psalm 100. <clears throat> We're going to read all five verses here in Psalm 100. Verse 1 reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not ourselves, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. <clears throat> and everybody has been posting how thankful they are for friends and for family, for health, and, you know, for finances and whatnot. And I haven't heard anybody wants this season say they're thankful for the blood and i gotta ask you are you thankful for the blood for the blood that was shed for you turn with your bibles here to the book of colossians chapter one move my bookmark out of the way colossians chapter one we're going to go here to verse 12 and just think about the blood sacrifice for you and what the Lord did, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you. Verse 12, Colossians 1, 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. I'm thankful for that blood because I know that without that blood, my sins can't be blotted out. And without the blotting out of my sins, being washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, I know I was only headed to hell. Are you thankful for the blood? Are you grateful for the sacrifice that was done in your place? Here, verse 12 says, giving thanks unto the Father. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to the Almighty Father above for giving his Son for you. Which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance in the saints of light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You, We were in darkness. And translate us into the kingdom of his dear son. We will reign with Christ forever and ever. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And it's not just that we have redemption through his blood. That's one thing. Here, there's a comma that says, even the forgiveness of sins. It's one thing for God to forgive you of something, but to forgive you of your sins. Your sins have been blotted out. You have been washed. I wasn't going to go here. Open up to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. I believe it's verse 4, verse 5. I think it's verse 5. Revelation 1, 5. Ooh, that's Jude. Revelation chapter, yeah, verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, Christ loved us, God loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He loved us enough to cleanse us of our sins in his own blood. And we can go to Hebrews, and I could tell you in chapter 9 how there was no forgiveness without blood, there's no remission of sin without blood. Bah, 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 bah. 
I gotta find the verse here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Who is he? Who is he? He is Christ, the King, the Prince of Peace. But by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jump over verse 22 says, And almost all things are by the law, purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. There's no remission of sin. But we saw here in Revelation uh, chapter 1 verse 4 or verse 5, it says, Has washed us from our sins in his own blood. Your sins have been washed, if you believe, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now turn here to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. We'll go here through the, we'll just read the first nine verses here. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. <clears throat> and you hath he quickened, and who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in our sins. you got to realize, before Christ came and died and was buried and rose again, in our place for our sins, we were dead. We were dead men walking. I don't care how much air is in your lungs. If you are living in your sins, if you are a slave, excuse me, a slave to your sins, and you are dead. But Christ has made us alive through his blood, through the redemption in his blood. Verse 2, Where in time past she walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that's Satan, among whom also we, had, we all had our conversation times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I'll come back to this nature point here in verse 3. Verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy with his great love, whereth he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Verse 6, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is only because the blood of Christ that saves us, but it is only through the mercy and the grace of God that we are saved. God doesn't have to save us simply because his son died he promised and he said that if you believe and you trust in christ in christ's death on the cross for our sins then he will be faithful and his grace and his mercy will be on you and you will be saved it's not just because christ died or and it's not it's because of the blood but it's not just the blood it's through the grace of god go here to <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 Ephesians 1 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace and only by the grace of God that we are not sent to hell man is wicked man is 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 deserving of nothing but hell nothing but damnation and torture um, if you have a Bible and you're in the the book of Ephesians here, over here is Galatians. I look right across, so this is just how my Bible, your, your font and size will make a difference. But mine, the very top is of the page before Ephesians, Galatians chapter 5, is verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, simulations, wrath, strife, sedation, and heresies. These are the things that will not enter the kingdom of God. So over here is all the negative, but right on the next page over, redemption through the blood of Christ according to the riches of God's grace go over here to the <coughs> book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 reads for the wages of sin is death 
you are dead in your sins. If you are a slave to your sin, then you are a slave to death. And you will die in those sins one way or another. A lot of times, a lot of sin will kill you physically. But not that, but it will kill you spiritually. Then, And if you die a sinful death, or with a lot of sin in your life and in your heart, you will you will die a second time at the at the end times or the book of Revelation called the second death. And that is when hell itself. All right. See, I was raised to be a good boy so you don't end up in hell. Hell isn't the worst place you can be. You think, Michael, that's it's ludicrous. How could you say that? Hell is bad. Hell gets picked up and cast into the lake of fire. So if you think hell is bad, there's a place that's worse than hell coming. I've preached this many times. The Lord has a place prepared. Go over here to Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Romans 1, 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See, there's a people out there, and there's some people out there that know that they're in sin. They reject God. They reject Christ. They, they disobey the gospel. And they know that they're in sin, and they like it. These are the worst. These people, they, they know the judgment to come. And they, and they still continue in their sins because they like it. So I ask you again. Are you thankful for the blood? Are you thankful for the man that died on the cross? God in the flesh. The only begotten Son of God. We'll go here to John chapter 3. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the, the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and the men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. See, even when Christ first came on this earth, he knew that there was darkness. He knew that there were those who wouldn't believe. He knew that there were those that wouldn't come out of the darkness and come to the light. The Bible clearly teaches we need to separate from that, not tolerate that. Come out of the darkness, come out of that spiritual Egypt, and come into the light that is Christ. I'm thankful for the blood. I'm thankful for the cross. Maybe you're watching this and you're not saved. Or maybe you're questioning it, or maybe you have a lot of questions about it. The Bible here teaches it's pretty it's pretty simple. Go here to Romans chapter ten, verse nine. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Real quick and I'll end it here. There's still hope out there, fellas. No matter how dark and messed up this world gets, there's still a light at the end of the tunnel. And Christ is that light. Are you thankful yet? Are you thankful for what he's done? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, 
unless ye have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Come to Christ today. Trust in his blood. Trust in the sacrifice that he did for you. Believe in your heart. Be thankful for the blood.